Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good Man, Madam President, I had my, my jump shot already for today, and they told me it was virtual. <laughs> well, keep practicing. We're ready. Keep, I have the camera practicing. all ready to go. <laughs> Good to see you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the 2022 CIAA Basketball Tournament Press Conference. Thank you for everybody for joining us. Um, I'd like to get everything started by introducing everybody that's on the call um, with us today. Um, we have CIAA Commissioner Jackie McWilliams, um, Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford, um, Al Hutchinson, CEO and President of Visit Baltimore, City of Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott, Dr. Aminta Bro, President of Bowie State University, Dr. Brenda Allen, President of Lincoln University, Coach Daryl Brooks, Head Men's Basketball Coach at Bowie State University, Coach Shade Schwan, Head Women's Basketball Coach at Bowie State University, um, and joining us later will be um, a few NBA Hall of Famers, Earl the Pearl, Monroe, and Bobby Dander should be on the call as well. So welcome everybody. Um, we'll have we'll have a Q&A session at the very end of the, uh, after all the speakers have um, engaged, and then um, we'll leave a little time for everybody to, to ask questions at the end. Before I turn it over to Commissioner McWilliams, we'll start out with a quick little intro video um, of the CIAA tournament so you can see what everything, what we're all about. Thank you for that. And now I'll turn it over to Seattle Commissioner, um, Ms. Jackie McWilliams Park. Thank you, Ben, and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we are thrilled to hold our first live in person CIAA basketball championship tournament since 2020 in the Charm City of Baltimore. So, as you know, last year we introduced Baltimore to CIAA fans across the country virtually. And it was a success, but as you know, the CIAA is about great basketball, family, legacy, education, and community. And we really like to be together. So we're looking forward to creating new legacy this year in person in the Charm City. Um, just for me, I lived in Baltimore for almost two years as the assistant director for internal ops at Morgan State. And I love the city then, and I love it just as much now. And we're so happy to be able to share the experience of Baltimore with you all, the essence of the Charm City, with our CIAA fans and family and, and teams. As described in the ESPN, if you've ever seen a documentary, Black Magic, at the CIA, the Black Magic video, at the CIAA we eat, we party, and we play great basketball. And what I'm certain of is that food, culture, and entertainment in Baltimore aligns perfectly with CIAA ba basketball legacy, leadership, and community. Before we start, I'd like to thank our corporate partners, Coca-Cola, Food Line, Nationwide, Lowe's, and BSN, Under Armour. Um, they've been great partners. And through all of what we've gone through in the last couple of years, they continue to support and invest in our institutions and in this tournament. And together, we've made some tough decisions um, in the past year, but they've never wavered in their commitment to the conference and to our student athletes. I would also like to thank my 12 member board and our membership, but our board led by Dr. Anita Bro at Bowie State University and the whole entire board has had confidence in me to lead this conference even during times of uncertainty. We are definitely a resilient conference. So 2022 is a notable year for the CIAA as we celebrate many firsts. So for the first time since 1952, the CIAA basketball tournament 
is being held in Baltimore and the first time outside of North Carolina since 1993, making the games more accessible to fans in this Northeastern corridor. The CIAA was the first NCAA Division II conference to have its tournament televised as part of Championship Week on ESPN. So it's very exciting to partner with ESPN once again in a multi-year deal to broadcast not just the men's tournament, but the women's tournament too. All 22 games will be on, our in, in, on all of our platforms with expanded coverage. We're also bringing in all the CIAA staple, staple of events as we have done in the past that we all love to be a part of Baltimore, including Fan Fest, High School Education Day, CIAA Career Expo, Super Saturday, the sixth annual Samaritan's Feet Shoes of Hope event, and the John B. McClendon Jr. CIAA Hall of Fame Breakfast, which many of these will be a part of a, a hybrid on our platforms. So plus some performances by some of my favorites, the magnificent DJ Jazzy Jeff, the legendary DJ Cool, Big Daddy Kane, Yo-Yo, Moni Love, Rakim, and the Chalet. Trust me, there will be some go-go and some Baltimore house in the midst as well, some of my favorites. The city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland have opened their doors to the CIAA. We're so grateful for their partnership and the vision for their growth, for our growth together. We operate with safe, safety on top of mind for this great state of Maryland in this tournament. It's with great pleasure that I introduce Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford. Well, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, Commissioner McWilliams, of course, uh, Mayor Scott, Al Hutchins uh, from Visit Baltimore. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you and Al look like you're wearing the same clothes today. I guess I didn't get that memo. Uh, of course, I want to thank the OE State President uh, Amita Bro. Dr. Amita Pro, it's always good to see you and be on the same, I guess, platform, not stage together. Uh, I want to thank uh, Lincoln University President Brenda Allen uh, for today's announcement as well. You know, the COVID-19 pandemic initially delayed Baltimore's in-person per hosting uh, duties for the tournament in 2021. We're looking forward to welcoming thousands of players, fans, and other visitors from around the region to Maryland as they celebrate the outstanding student athletes playing in the term tournament, as well as their love for the colleges and universities represented in the tournament. This tournament is also a chance for us to shine a bright light on CIAA member Bowie State University, the primary host institution of this year's tournament, the Bulldogs have committed themselves to both athletic and academic excellence, recently ranking as uh, up in the top 25 of historically black colleges and universities in the nation. I am confident that uh, Mr. Darrell Brooks and Ms. Swain uh, from Bowie State can lead their teams to victory, further raising Bowie State's profile and bringing more bright scholar athletes to Bowie and it is my hope that they fall in love with our great state once they're here and choose Maryland as a place where they wanna begin their professional careers and raise their families. This tournament is also a unique opportunity to highlight all that is great about Baltimore City and the area and what it has to offer starting at the Royal Farms Arena as the host venue. I wanna thank everyone, each of you, our local leaders, our corporate partners, uh, for working to make the CIAA tournament a positive and memorable experience for visitors and Marylanders alike. The tournament is coming during a slow time for many of our regional uh, hospitality and tourist industry. And that's why, you know, this is so important given that the pandemic had hit that industry in particular. Uh, we are looking forward to the men's and women's tournaments, which could mean an economic activity or economic impact of some $50 million and additional support for 85,000 people working in the tourism industry. We look forward to generating more positive buzz and economic activity for our communities. The state of Maryland is committed to the success of the CIAA tournament through 2023. And this is our chance to showcase the best 
of what Baltimore and Maryland have to offer. So I wanna thank you again. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Rutherford. Thank you for the state of Maryland uh, making the investment and in supporting this tournament. It means everything um, to allow us to do things differently. So we appreciate you. Now I'd like to introduce Al Hutchinson, President and CEO of Visit Baltimore, who has been a true partner and also a dear friend in bringing the CIAA, CIAA tournament to the Charm City. We have an all-star team, Al and I, we couldn't do it without them. And so we're so grateful for the work that they've already done to get us prepared. Al will be here in 35 days for tip-off and 33 days for the, for the first event that we'll host in Baltimore. Commissioner McWilliams, thank you so much for your intro. And um, we're very excited to be the host for 2022's tournament. And I wanna first start off with a big thanks to Lieutenant Governor Rutherford, Governor Hogan, for the support of the state of Maryland, uh, Mayor Brandon Scott for his support. If it had not been the support of Maryland and of the city of Baltimore, we would not be here today talking about this great event. So I really wanted to thank you guys and we're super excited about it. This, this is huge for Baltimore City and for the state of Maryland, um, bringing in all these student athletes, fans, alumni, uh, students from all across the country to come into Charm City for the last week in February. As all of us know, this is the first time since 2005 that this great tournament has uh, left uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And we're so excited to be the host city in 2022. Um, I also want to give a, a shout out and a thanks to both Calvin Butler and Mike Hankin, uh, the co-chairs of our local organizing committee. Uh, leadership is everything, and, and those two gentlemen have really helped us to get things moving. And also, we're very excited to be hosting the CIAA because we know the, the young folks here in Maryland and the DMV, Baltimore City, will have the opportunity to be exposed to 12 HBCUs that they may not have any knowledge of in the past. And so by this tournament being hosted in Baltimore, we are so confident that a lot of our young folks will get introduced to some great institutions and uh, may want to go to school at one of these universities and colleges. Look, this is, as all of us know, more than just basketball. Um, here in the DMV, we just know that we want our Southern fans to feel comfortable and excited about coming to Baltimore City. But we also know by hosting the CIAA basketball tournament, we will be exposing this tournament to a, a great number of new fans here in the DMV, in the Northeast Corridor, in the Mid-Atlantic part of our country. And we think that's exciting. This has been a very tough time period for all of us across America due to the pandemic. And uh, in Baltimore City, and I know with the mayor's leadership, we've been really uh, doubling down on supporting our small businesses, especially our Black-owned small businesses. And the CIAA gives us an opportunity to really embrace those small businesses. And we believe that the fan base coming to Baltimore City, they're gonna be exposed to a great number of businesses. They'll be able to support them. And one of the things we've done at Visit Baltimore, we've created a, what we call the BOP, B-O-P pass. And it's a pass that was created by a, a young poet, uh, Mecca Verdell. She was the co-writer of, of this new BOP pass. But this will allow all the fans to be able to enjoy a, a number of our black owned businesses, restaurants for discounts. They can go to the Great Blacks and Wax Museum, Frederick Douglass, Isaac Myers Museum, uh, the Reginald Lewis Museum at discounts. So we're inviting our guests to go out and enjoy that. And we're also partnering with Downtown Partnership and Shalonda and her team. We will have some pop-up stores in our downtown corridor where a number of our small businesses will be able to have their shops and their wares stored so folks can come out and, and really take advantage of the black owned businesses. I have to give a thanks and a shout out to the local businesses, uh, our corporate businesses who have been local contributors of this tournament thus far. And there are folks like Whiting Turner, Verizon, Bank of America, Under Armour, Amtrak, uh, BW Thurgood Marshall Airport, the Baltimore Ravens, T. Rowe Price, the Cordish Companies, Brown Advisory, uh, PNC Bank, Freyport USA, Horseshoe Casino, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, Baltimore Gas and Electric, Johns Hopkins University in Medicine. And we have more. You can go to our website at baltimore.org front slash CIAA to see all these great local 
contributors. The business community is very, very excited about supporting this tournament. One of the things that we committed to the CIAA early on is if you come to Baltimore, we're gonna make sure all the fans feel welcome. So we've created a number of diversity, equity, inclusion training for our hospitality industry. We've had two to date. We will have our third one tomorrow where we're inviting our hoteliers, restaurateurs, museums and attractions to really go through this training because we want them to make sure all of our fans feel welcome to the great city of Baltimore. And we've created a new warm welcome program, which means anyone that comes to Baltimore, regardless of gender, race, ethnicity, you will feel welcome in our community. This is a new program that we set up a few months ago, and we believe it's really going to set the stage for all the great folks that come in for the CIAA to really feel truly welcome. Two other things I really want to mention. One is on public health. As all of us know, that's number one priority at this time. And the Visit Baltimore's team, along with the CIAA's team led by the commissioner, We've been working in lockstep with the health commissioner here in Baltimore City to make sure that all of our fans, when they come to Baltimore, they will feel safe. So we have protocols in place. We have to wear our mask indoors at Royal Farms Arena. Make sure you, you abide by that. And uh, some of the private events, we may go to another level of protocols, but stay tuned to that. It's very, very important that the health of all visitors are number one student athletes, fans, coaches, cheerleaders, all of our local residents. So public health, believe us, our team is on board with that. And then public safety. We've partnered early on with the Baltimore Police Department, downtown and waterfront partnership to make sure all of our visitors will feel welcome and feel comfortable in our city. We believe we have a great platform in place in the downtown corridor, as well as our other entities as folks visit. I believe the 12 presidents feel comfortable with the plan we have in place. So from a safety standpoint, we believe we're ready, eager to go. We just rolled out this morning a, a volunteer portal. So we're inviting all of our Baltimore city residents, county residents to join us in welcoming all these great fans to Baltimore. We're totally excited about it. And the last thing I'll just say is we've been really aggressively creating this robust story about the CIAA. Great HBCUs, we're on platforms via social media. You're gonna see more on radio and, and in the local newspaper very, very soon, probably this week, but we're excited about it. And we want our, our fraternity friends, sorority friends, faith-based friends, all help us spread the, the love about the CIAA coming to Baltimore. We have welcome banners up now, Commissioner, all in downtown, but we're also putting them in our neighborhoods, Pennsylvania Avenue, North Avenue, around Morgan State and Coppin State University. We wanna make sure our local residents are invited to the tournament as well. We're extremely excited about this event. It will be a game changer for Baltimore. So we're very excited, looking forward to it. Thank you, Commish. Thank you to the 12 presidents, Dr. Bro. You are a special leader and Dr. Allen, thank you guys for your support. And we're really looking forward to the CIAA coming in 31 days. So with that, take a look at this sizzle roll video and then we'll get right back to you. Thank you, Donald, for that. And look, we, we have what we believe is the best sharp shooting point guard in America who's leading our efforts to be the cheerleader for CIAA. And that's no other than the Honorable Mayor of the great city of Baltimore, Mr. Brandon Scott. Mayor Scott, please welcome this group, my friend. Thank you, Al. Uh, thank you. And thank you for your leadership and to you and the entire team at Visit Baltimore for your work and efforts in securing uh, this important uh, tournament for Baltimore. And Madam Commissioner, Madam President, and to the entire board, thank you all uh, for not just believing in, but betting on Baltimore. As mayor of Baltimore, and more importantly, as a basketball fan and a Black man, there really are no words to describe how excited I am to have the CIAA here in Charm City at the soon-to-be new and improved Royal Farms Arena. We all know that the CIAA really 
represents an opportunity to present black excellence in sports, academics, and community our region and nation through one of our nations, in this case, blackest cities. Connecting the history of the CIAA with the black history of Baltimore is a perfect match. Uh, simply put, they go together like crabs and obey. And this is reflected in the leadership and vision uh, that you see in our HBCUs here in Baltimore and the outstanding strength in our black and brown owned businesses in our community. It complements the CIAA, our city's vibrant sports culture, which is anchored, of course, by our treasured Ravens and Orioles, our Baltimore Marathon, our exciting bid to host the 2026 World Cup. But also, and more importantly to me, it complements our reach in rich and deep basketball history. Baltimore is a basketball town through and through. And this tournament will bring the best of Black America to Baltimore. Students and graduates of HBCUs will descend on Baltimore in just a few weeks to experience our great city and everything that we have to offer. We know that the CIAA is one of the most popular, the most popular by my standards, college basketball tournaments across the entire country and one of the nation's top ranking sporting events. It's continued to grow over the years and it's growing at an incredible rate. Uh, we know that the first tournament had 2,000 fans and we now know it attracts over 100,000 fans on a yearly basis. We will welcome every single one of them as honored guests to experience our food, culture, history, and Baltimore's immersion renaissance. And they will experience all of that in our city. We cannot understate the impact that it will have for our city, the opportunity to engage with new visitors and businesses to hopefully attract some of those young minds that the schools are teaching right now to relocate here to Baltimore permanently. And we want everyone to enjoy uh, what they discover here in Baltimore. Uh, with respect to COVID, as Al talked about, uh, we are seeing some encouraging signs and hope that the intensity of this wave will have waned by the end of February, but we will continue to follow the science and guidance of our health commissioner, making sure that we are keeping everyone uh, that's attending the CIAA as safe as possible. And as a, at a minimum, as you heard from Al, we want our attendees to wear your mask to protect yourselves. I look forward uh, to welcoming the CIAA athletes and students to Charm City and watching some excellent basketball that only the CIAA can offer. Again, Dr. Bro, Dr. Allen, Commissioner McWilliams, I wanna thank you for believing in our city and uh, we have great excitement. Uh, we will look forward to welcoming the fellow presidents and athletic directors, I hope, uh, Madam President, that they worked on their jump shot because as Al will tell you, I've never seen a three-pointer that I didn't like. We are going to together create a new legacy for the CIAA here in Baltimore, not this year, just this year, but for years to come. So to everyone in Baltimore and beyond, get your tickets and get ready to celebrate the CIAA the Baltimore way. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Al. Um, I'm ready to play, Mayor. I'm going to bring my shoes. I'll be ready for you. Um, we're looking forward to all that Baltimore uh, will bring to this tournament. Um, and, and every time you all speak, from Lieutenant Governor to Al and yourself, um, you just increase the excitement of why we chose you all um, and the leadership of the city to make sure that um, we have a great experience for all of our fans. I'm proud that the CIAA conference is one of the few tournaments to feature both the men's and women's competitions during the same week at the same facility. And we market the same visibility for both of our, both of our teams. So thank you Bowie State coaches for being on here and always being a great representation of what our coaches look like and the work that you do throughout the season to prepare our students for this tournament. As I mentioned this year, this is a significant year for the CIAA, but it's also the 50th anniversary of the 1972 Title IX Act for Higher Education, which promises equal access to education for all students, and it protects against discrimination on the basis of sex. As the first female commissioner of the CIAA, what a year to celebrate this 50th, 50th anniversary with a few of my other sisters I must acknowledge who are first, such as first Black Women Commissioner at, for Division I, NEAC, Sonia Stills, Division III Commissioners, Portia Hogue of Centennial Conference and Danielle Harris of the WIAC and Division III. We are finally represented in all three levels. And I assured you all several times that 
I may be the first, but I wouldn't be the last. So I'm really honored um, to work with a board that has five women out of 12 board members who are women that specifically provide this amazing leadership. I'm honored to work with them. I would like to introduce two trailblazers who were also first at their institutions uh, to be the presidents, Dr. Mina Bro, CIAA board chair and president of Bowie State University, uh, who serves as the host institution, and also Dr. Brenda Allen, president of Lincoln University, who's our supporting host and who's always willing to step in to make sure that we're a success. So thank you both for being here today. I think I go first. And so I just wanna say I'm excited. Um, we didn't get to get together in person last year, although the virtual um, opportunity was still great. So I can't wait. So Al, you say it's 31 days. So we'll start the countdown on our end. So again, good afternoon, I'm Brenda Allen and I am so delighted to bring you greetings from Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, the nation's first degree granting historically black college. I think that's always important to say. We are so excited to be a co-host um, for the CIAA in Baltimore. As many of you know, Lincoln University has a rich legacy of alumni from the Baltimore Metro area the most notable probably being Chief Justice Thurgood Marshall, who is in Lincoln University class of 1929. I think that's important because we have such a rich legacy of alumni in the city. We're hopeful that we can be helpful in ensuring that we not only help our other CIAA institutions actually enjoy the partnership as we cheer on our um, student athletes, but we are also so excited to be able to bring to especially our more Southern institutions, all of the hospitality that the Baltimore city area has to offer. And so I'm excited that it's finally up our way as we are singing, Bowie and Lincoln being the northernmost um, institutions in the CIAA, we get to show them that we are south of the Mason-Dixon line. So we're still in the south, but we're far enough north to be able to show them something a little bit different than what we've been getting in Charlotte and the other places. And so I look forward to engaging you all in 31 days. Um, and please call on Lincoln University to do anything that we can to help this be the most successful tournament we've ever had. Thank you. Well said, President Allen. I'm excited also. I'm Amin Tabro, and I bring you greetings on behalf of the CIAA Board of Directors. Uh, the, I serve as the chair for the board, and I'm just so thrilled to have this uh, event finally come about. And I want to convey my deepest appreciation to all who have been working on this leading up to this point. Al Hutchinson, Mayor Scott. Mayor Scott, I'm, I have the camera ready. I want to see that, that jump shot. I want to see that three-pointer. I'm all set. And Lieutenant Governor uh, Rutherford and Governor Hogan, uh, we thank you all for everything that you've been doing to support this endeavor. To the Maryland Legislative Black Caucus, we thank you so very much. And to all of our elected leaders in the city of Baltimore, the region, the state, for your support of the upcoming CIAA tournament. Yes, we are pumped up. Our student athletes are excited. My coaches are on here and they'll say a little bit in a, in a few moments, but know that we are all thrilled to see this come about. I also greet you as uh, today as the very proud 10th president of Bowie State University, the first HBCU in the state of Maryland, where I also have the honor to serve. And uh, I'm so excited about what is to come very, very soon from now. Bowie State University is located in Prince George's County, and we have very, very strong roots stemming back to Charm City, where BSU was actually founded in 1868. And so I'm so uh, just really thrilled uh, to have this time come about and uh, to have us, I'm sorry, 1865. I got President uh, Allen, I can't mess up there. We're so thrilled to have this time come about and where we can return to our roots and have our students, faculty and staff join us up in Charm City in Baltimore uh, next month where our BSU alumni can come together and join with other alums from the other CIAA universities to cheer on our out outstanding student athletes. This is also an opportunity for us to work collaboratively with former CIAA member institutions and their alumni, including Morgan State University, Maryland Eastern Shore, 
and Howard University, as well as our other Maryland-based HBCUs like Coppin State University and the universities across the university system of Maryland. We want everyone to turn out and get excited and pumped up about our student athletes and their talent on the courts and all that they have uh, that they achieve through the classroom and their learning throughout the year. CIAA's arrival in Baltimore will not only reinvigorate our industry and the economy, its tradition of celebrating academic contributions, culture, and the sports legacy of our HBCUs will allow our city's youth to learn more about HBCUs and set their sights on attending one of these story institutions. And so in a moment, you're going to hear from our coaches, Coach Sade Swan and Coach Darrell Brooks, but I just want everyone to know we're ready to rock and roll. And we're going to be up in Charm City in, what did we say, 31 days and counting. Know that we're counting down to great excitement, and we invite you all to come out and celebrate the CIAA. On behalf of Bowie State University and the Board of Directors for the CIAA, I invite you to come up to Charm City and let's have a great time together celebrating excellence across our HBCUs, the member institutions of the CIAA. Thank you. We're gonna bring our coaches on, Coach Swan and Coach Brooks for a few words. Hello. Again, this is Coach Swan, head women's basketball coach from Bowie State University. Um, I'm, is, I'm very excited about this tournament. As a Baltimore native, um, I still live in Baltimore. The city has, you know, shaped me into the person that I am with the culture of the city in the basketball community. Um, I just believe that the revenue generated from the tournament, it'll help to increase our education and recreation facilities for our youth in the city. Um, Mayor Scott has been doing a tremendous job with the policies in place for COVID-19 to make sure that we see each other in 31 days. So we don't have to worry about postponing anything because we will be there. Uh, <laughs> and basketball is what we do in, this, in our city. So I'm just looking forward to a huge crowd and everyone coming out so that they can learn more about the city of Baltimore, um, the CIAA conference and all of the teams, especially Bowie State University. Thank you. Hi, Daryl Brooks, head men's basketball coach here at Bowie State University. I'm a proud Bowie State alum. I'm from the city of New York, but I came down here and really got engaged in the city of Baltimore very early uh, in, my, in my term here at Bowie State. So uh, Lieutenant uh, Governor Rutherford, uh, Mayor Scott, Al, uh, President Pro, uh, uh, Dr. Allen, Commissioner, I'm really excited to see all, all of you guys. I'm really, really excited to see Earl Monroe and Bobby Dandridge because growing up, those are two of the names that we heard about CIAA basketball. So really, really excited to be here. Um, Mayor Scott, um, I heard about your jump shot. There's some age difference between us, but I got to tell you, I would have locked you down. <laughs> <laughs> so we're really excited. We're really excited to get going and, and look forward to seeing everybody. Uh, thank you both for joining us today in Bowie State and Lincoln just for being a part of this experience that we get to provide for all of our other member institutions. And just a little history, Lincoln was one of our founding members of the CIAA. And also James Frank was the first black president of the NCAA and he was the president at Lincoln University. So as you know, there's so much history in this conference and how we bring our family back and how everyone contributes to the success of our tournament and for our student athletes. It's exciting to be a part of that. The mayor, Lieutenant Governor and Al, they have told us all about Baltimore and what makes the city so special. And I absolutely agree. Um, since we've started this planning, it has been exciting. It has been worthwhile of all this thing that we've been waiting for for the past two years to get here. And what makes Baltimore great are the communities and the people that make up the rich culture and history that is personal to so many of us. One person in particular, or a couple, let's just start with NBA Basketball Hall of Fame and CIAA Hall of Famer and legend Earl the Pearl Monroe, who was also part of the Winston-Salem State University Division II first championship team in the NCAA. Um, he's been ready and has been a part of this process since day one. 
And this year, he and NBA Hall of Famer and also CIAA Hall of Famer Bobby Dandridge, who is very dear to my heart as well, a, a CIAA graduate, Norfolk State University, are teaming up to lead a youth sports clinic prior to the start of the tournament. They are both members of the CIAA Hall of Fame, as I said. They're no strangers to our family and always get involved when we need them. So let me turn it over to our special guest, our Earl of Pearl, and we'll let you start and then we'll have Bobby Dandridge step in as well. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, great, great, great. Hey, it's it's such an honor to be with you guys today. Um, the excitement, you know, kind of overflows. You know, I've, I've got the advantage of being not only a CIAA, -er, but also a guy who also played in, in Baltimore. So this is a double whammy and, and I'm, I'm so happy. Um, and to do something with my, my good friend, Bobby Dandridge, uh, for the kids there, you know, we're, we're going to sponsor or have 200 kids there that we're going to have a clinic on Saturday, the 19th, I think it is of uh, February. And we're going to try and do as much as we can to inform them, not only about the CIAA, about, but about things that they might come across in life. Um, we're, you know, we've been down the road a few times and uh, we're not going to tell our age in this here. But, uh, but it's, you know, it's really, really exciting for, you know, us to be a part of this. And of course, um, Ms. Mac, Mac, Mac Williams, it's always good to see you and Al and, and uh, oh, Dr. Roy and, and Dr. Allen, it's great to see you as well. And Lieutenant Governor, it's, it's great. And I didn't know we had a, a man so young in, in Baltimore, now I know what's going on. It's, everything is happening now because he got a young guy involved with this. So uh, congratulations to you and great to be with you guys. And um, I'll, I'll look for that three-pointer as well. So, you know, again, uh, it's great to be with you guys and uh, can't wait for this to happen. It's been a long time, uh, especially being a northerner, so to speak, from Philadelphia. You know, we've never had the opportunity to see the CIAA, you know, kind of close to us. Now we've got, you know, people that are able to come from, you know, up in the north. And of course, we're going to bring our folks from down south, you know, up here as well. So thank you for having me. And uh, hey, it's great to be, a, be amongst you guys. Thank you, Earl. We appreciate you joining us today. Bobby Dandridge, I know him as Coach Bobby Dandridge. <laughs> Sanders, are you there? Well, if he pops in in the next second, we'll let him join us here. But uh, Earl, we thank you so much and you and Coach Sanders, Bobby Sanders, for being a part of this um, historic moment for us again. And as we continue to celebrate this coming year, also some of our legends that we've lost, um, Sam Jones and even Coach Bond, who were dear to us and attended the tournament and who also made great, uh, a great foundation for this conference. We are grateful um, to celebrate them as well. So thank you all again. I'm gonna hand this over to Ben and Martine um, so that we can have a Q&A session and just appreciate all of our participants today. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner. Um, we'll open the, the floor open for, for questions from the media. Um, you can just raise your hand. We'll call on you and allow you to, uh, to, to speak at that time. All right, it looks like the first question is from Pete Gilbert. Um, please go ahead with your question and introduce yourself and direct your question to someone on the panel. Hi, yes, uh, Pete Gilbert with WBAL-TV in Baltimore. And I guess this is for Commissioner McWilliams. And Obviously, it, it seems, again, a perfect marriage to have this event here in Baltimore. The question is, what, what took so long? 
Wow, that is a great question. Uh, you know, we just went through a bid cycle. So I think Baltimore did a really good job in identifying whether the CIAA would be a good fit for them as, as we would obviously go through a process and identify if Baltimore or any other city was a good fit for us. And I think it's all about timing, you know, timing with leadership, timing with opportunity, timing for the growth and change for CIAA. We have a whole different board since I started, I have one board member from the 12 that I started with in 2012. And so I think the opportunity to think about, you know, Dr. Allen even said, you know, we hadn't been up north, you know, all the people who are on here up in the Northeast corridor sees it as an opportunity to really celebrate some of our schools in that area and to aggregate another alumni and another base of fans. And so we're excited. So it's all about timing. All right, well, the next question um, we'll take from John Dale from the Winston-Salem Journal. Hey, Commissioner, how you doing? Good to hear you, John. Hope good you're to, doing good well. To, good to hear you. Um, was got, wanted to ask, since Baltimore did, couldn't have the tournament last year, are they going to have it for the next three years then? Is that how you kind of moved up the, the time frame for the three-year uh, contract? Is that right? That's a great that's a great question. That's something that the board has been discussing and talking to the Baltimore leadership about the opportunity to extend, given that we lost the year. And really this year, I know we're talking about a lot of numbers and a lot of people, but we're also being quite realistic of what those numbers and tickets and hotels could look like, given that we're in this pandemic. I hopefully it will get better, but I think we want to make sure, not think, I know we want to make sure that we give Baltimore the opportunity to discuss the ability to extend um, after this tournament to gain back that year and even this year possibly. Thanks. Thanks, John. Uh, we'll open the next question to Kanika Cabares. I hope I said that right and I apologize if I didn't. Yes, that is correct. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. okay yes. This question is for Lieutenant Governor Rutherford Kanika Cabarrus with Next Level Sports and Entertainment. We are the sole black owned sports network and very thrilled to support all the efforts this year. After the awakening of 2020 and the incredible buzz and the eyes on HBCUs in the country right now, what message do you want the people of Maryland and the country to take away about black athletics within Black History Month? Uh, that the athletics at the uh, historically black colleges and universities is on par with the other schools. I don't know if you um, were able to see yesterday, uh, my Howard University played Notre Dame on national television. Uh, it was a close game. They didn't quite pull it out in the end. I think it was a three point difference, uh, but they were extremely competitive and, and should have won that game. But that's another story. Um, no, I think it just shows that just like in academics, in athletics, uh, our historically black colleges and universities are just as competitive as the other schools. Can I add to that for Lieutenant Governor? Do you mind, sir? No, hey, jump okay. in. I know you didn't answer me, but I, I will just say that I think what the country needs to be reminded of is that Without uh, black HBCU athletics and without black athletes, there would be no athletics in this country. Uh, we have to be, we need to be reminded of that. And when you think about the history and the current state of athletics, when you think about what Deion Sanders is doing, top recruits going down to play with him at HBCU, we're talking about a changing time in athletics where young men and young women aren't just going to be looking to go to the Dukes and the University of Maryland's of the world. They're going to be looking to CIAA schools because they know that they have the talent. They they have the talent and they could be taken and will be taking their talent to support our HBCU to lift them up as well. Kanika, if I could add, I, I love the you know comments from Lieutenant Governor and Mayor, because you know this sports thing is right. This is what we get to do. I get to do every single day. And to be a part of a conference that shares in the wealth of history and legacy and community and leadership, that's our story every single day. 
So the tournament is just one of the greatest opportunities where we can provide the most awareness about what HBCUs do. As Dr. Burrow has state, stated earlier, you know, we will engage all of our HBCUs within this upper region um, that ne may not have the same opportunity in the past. And so one of our founding members is Howard University with Lincoln. Virginia Union is one of our family members that's up in the Jordan area. So I do think there's some great opportunity um, to build and leverage what HBCUs have done in this country, what we continue to do in this country, where we started with Black athletes and where we continue to grow with Black athletes at HBCUs, but across the world. And so it's, it's an exciting time. And we can't, we can't give up the opportunity to tell the stories and to keep the traditions alive um, so that people are aware of how HBCUs have contributed way beyond sports, but we get to use sport as the avenue to help tell the story. Thank you all. Um, next question is gonna come from Charles Robinson from uh, Maryland Public Television. So you got Bobby D on the line up. We do, Coach Dandridge, good to see you. We've been waiting for you. Hey Coach Dandridge, we'll, we'll allow you to go ahead and say a few words. We'll hold the questions for now. Coach Dandridge, if you want to say a few words about um, the event um, and you know your role at the the clinic. Well, I'm just I'm just following Jackie uh, Mac Williams and <laughs> and Earl Monroe, but it's a pleasure to be reunited with the CIAA. I look forward to being in Baltimore and meeting some of the dignitaries, the politicians, and uh, presidents of uh, these distinguished universities. And I'm just excited. I, I've always loved the city of Baltimore. Uh, one of my fondest memories is Muted, Bobby. Yeah. Hello, did you hear anything? Well, I'll talk. <laughs> I'll talk when I get to Baltimore. <laughs> Thanks, Coach Dandridge. Um, Thanks, Coach Dandridge. Um, Thanks, Coach Dandridge. Um, We'll jump back into the Q&A. Um, we have a little bit of technical difficulties. We'll jump back in. Um, Mr. Robinson, if you want to move forward with your question. Can you hear me now? Sorry about that. Uh, I want to know how the tournament is going to drive not just the patrons downtown, but to accent some of the African-American businesses that aren't necessarily downtown, but are kind of scattered throughout the city. Mr. Mayor, you want me to take that? So we've been working, we got announced that we were to host this tournament in January of 2019. So we've been working on this for a really, really long time. And when I say we, it's been a broad section of our community, a huge local organizing committee. And we, we were very intentional about CIAA. We went after it, no doubt, because of the economic impact of Baltimore City. But we really went after it because of Baltimore's background. I mean, we're a predominantly African-American city with Black individuals running businesses, owning businesses. And it would have been... Um, uh, really insane on our part not to bring the Black community involved in this. And so we've reached out to a number of, of small Black businesses. They are part of our local organizing committee. I mentioned earlier, one of the things we're doing from an activation standpoint is pop-up businesses will be downtown. Businesses who are not in the downtown footprint, but in other neighborhoods around Baltimore, we're going to make it very easy for them to set up shop in our downtown corridor. Uh, we are producing apparel as we speak for our volunteers. We're looking to have three to 400 volunteers 
there's an African-American um, minority-owned company that's producing that apparel uh, for us. We've also partnered with another manufacturing company that's African-American that's producing masks, CIAA masks for us. We have a number of small businesses that we engage in conversation day one. That's extremely important to visit Baltimore, but it's also important to Mayor Scott in Baltimore City that our businesses have to be involved. And this is about not just basketball downtown, but this is about Baltimore City. And so we, we definitely are intentional. Um, Zach McDaniels, who are part of our team, who's out there talking to the private sector, raising money. We're talking to Black-owned businesses as well, where they can have a role. So believe me, this has been something that's been going on for the past almost two and a half years. And we want to make sure at the end of the day, when the CIAA leaves us at the end of February, we want to make sure we change the footprint of Baltimore, that there should be businesses that are successful from this event. There should be new businesses that want to come into Baltimore and set up shop. This is way bigger than just hosting a basketball tournament. This has an economic development vein to it, and uh, we're very focused on it, and uh, we're, we're going to drive that home until this tournament uh, comes to us in the last week of February. Al, can we mention that the Reggie Lewis uh, Center or the Reggie Lewis uh, museum. Black Museum, yes, is a Virginia State University graduate, so. And they and we'll will be, be hosting a number of events during the, yes. during the week for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Alvin, Commissioner. Next question we'll take was from Don uh, Stinson from DNA Sports Talk. Don, you're on mute. Thank you, sorry about that. Uh, what things did you learn from last year being virtual that will translate into this year as you provide an in-person tournament? I can take that. Um, what we learned is people love it. They loved it. They felt engaged. Um, we stayed relevant. And we see there's still an opportunity to still use the platform to get the same type of engagement for those who can't come in person. Um, I do believe the virtual platform allowed for us to reach the masses beyond just this region. I mean, we were across the world um, that people could be a part of an experience and learn what the CIAA is about. A lot of people hear about the CIAA, but until you actually come, you don't really know what it is and you can't really feel it in the same way. But I think the virtual tournament allowed for people to experience maybe virtually, not hands-on, but I, I believe some of those fans who wanted to come um, or had not come that was a part of that platform will come. We will still use that virtual platform. Well, Education Day is one that we were gonna do in person. I think our team has been very mindful of what we're dealing with in the midst of how many people that we're trying to bring to certain events. So certain events that will be private in person, some of the public events we might put, or we have decided such as Education Day, to put on a virtual platform. So what it has done is it's allowed us to be, it's allowed us to pivot. <laughs> it's allowed us to adjust our game plan so that we can still provide the access and opportunity to all those we want to be involved with the tournament. Thank you, Commissioner. Next question we'll take from um, James, Hill, James Hill from the Black News uh, Channel. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is well. I wanted to ask Jackie, uh, could you just talk a little bit about the significance of the CIAA? Uh, some people may not really understand what this means to the history of America, our culture, our people, and human beings overall, but the significance of, and you alluded to it, the CIAA. That's a great question, and hopefully I won't get teary-eyed because I'm that passionate about this conference. Um, I started as a player when I was 18 at Hampton University. So 
don't think until after I graduated, um, I really realized what I was playing for, who I was playing for, and why. And playing at the institution, you know, you went there, you, there's something about this conference that is very different than any conference. And I can speak on it because I've seen other conferences and how they relate. I have a board that are friends, not just colleagues, but they trust and value each other's leadership and they depend on each other to help and lean on each other to help make decisions, not just at their institutions, but to give me guidance. That's the same way how they treat their own students on their campuses. Um, our students know their presidents and the presidents know their students. From student athletes all the way, all the way to the band, the chair, to the, um, um, to the queen and kings on their campuses. There's something very personal about this conference. It was founded in 1912. It was incorporated in Washington, DC. I shared the five founding members Three of the members left um, in order to build our sister conference, our brother conference, the MEAC. Um, there was never a sense that these two conferences wouldn't work collaboratively, but we would have a division one and we would have a division two. In the CIAA, I think the staple of this conference, I think I heard we had 2000 fans at the first tournament or maybe that meant the, the tickets were maybe $12, $15, whatever that was. And you get to see 24 games, 22 teams um, make impact across the world. I would say, and maybe the athletes that are on here, Bobby Dandridge and, and um, Sade would even say, you know, some, this game and this conference saved our lives and gave us opportunities way beyond just the game. And so it is a thrill to be a part of the history and the legacy of this conference, but it's even more thr thrilled to see the leadership, not just from our president's standpoint, but when I get to talk to students this past week that are going to be recipients of the Lowe's um, Academic Award and hear their dreams and where they want to go and how athletics was just a tool and the avenue to get them to that dream. To me, that is like the essence of the CIAA. It's so much more than the game, although we use the game to make huge impact across the world. And we would be, it would be a shame if we didn't use the sport that we have the opportunity and the privilege to play to, to help make these students successful or give them the opportunity to be successful through sport, to help them graduate, to give them jobs, to mentor them. That's what CIAA does. I don't know what everybody else's conference does. Well, I do, but I know what CIAA does. And we create leaders and we build legacy and we have tradition and we give back in our community. We're about to give shoes to students or kids in the Baltimore community. The goal is 200 to 500 youth that will have shoes that weren't even expecting them for the day, right? But we get with community partners to make that impact in that CIAA. And I can talk on and on and on about this conference, but I'll stop right there because the history is rich, the leadership is strong in the community. We make impact no matter what the championship is. And this platform just allows to give that greater exposure to do so and to tell the story. Now this tournament has been tremendous for years and people look forward to going into Charlotte every year. Uh, this time they get an opportunity to go into Baltimore. Can you talk a little bit about what that can look like? And then also the fact that the upper Eastern seaboard and even people coming in from a Chicago or the Midwest, they can come into Baltimore. They can come in from LA or Tokyo and enjoy themselves. Yeah, I mean, the great thing is you have direct flights. It, you can take the train, um, you can drive. I mean, we're in distance to everywhere. Um, the other thing is I think Baltimore in the community, there's there's right now there's such a synergy between the CIAA and Baltimore with our history and our legacy and the traditions and the opportunity um, to build this fan base, whatever that looks like. We were very clear that moving out of North Carolina and from the South that it may keep some from wanting to come, but we were also very clear that there would be fans coming from the Northeast all the way you know, as far south as you want to go, who wanted something different and who wanted to be a part of a different community. And I think that's the thing. It, this 
Baltimore is very different than Charlotte, North Carolina, or in Norfolk where we were, right? So I think we get to have a different flavor as it relates to food, as it relates to venue, as it relates to people and culture. And the one thing you should all know is that we spent, and Al knows how important this is to me, the communication and how we get information out to everyone so they know what to expect, the public safety, and all the things that you think Baltimore is, it's not, and also the COVID that we're dealing with. As well. We are also just as concerned as all of you are, given the impact that it has on our communities. But you're working with leadership that you see on here that is no nonsense about making sure that those three areas are taken care of. So the uniqueness of coming for Baltimore and the intentionality that they have from the state, from the city, and from the region is none like other I've, I've dealt with since I've been here. So I'm just grateful that we have the opportunity to reset ourselves and look different, feel different, but still be in the same platform of this brand of CIAA. We're just taking it to a new location with a different opportunity. Hey, Madam Commissioner, if I could just add to Mr. Hill's question, just from a a destination and a city perspective as to why the CIAA. I've been doing this kind of work a really, really long time. There are not many iconic sporting events that a city would aspire to go after. When you're talking, whether it's Super Bowl, whether it's, uh, you know, yeah. World Cup, CIAA event is a mega event. It's arguably the largest African-American sports marketing event in the country. And for us to be fortunate enough to gain the confidence of these 12 presidents and the commissioner to host this event, it's huge for Baltimore. But it's huge, again, not just because of basketball, but because of these student athletes, these future leaders coming into Baltimore City. And if we showcase Baltimore City in the way we know we can showcase it, not only the city, but the state of Maryland. What will end up happening is we'll have a number of folks who would want to relocate to Baltimore. They want to live here, buy homes here. They may want to send their kids to school here. They may own a business in some city in America. They want to relocate their business to this great city. This, the CIAA has an incredible brand, but so does Baltimore and so does Maryland. And if so, if we embrace it from that perspective, celebrate basketball, celebrate these great student athletes, but really bigger than that, celebrate the greatness, the real excellence that CIAA has brought to this country. And now we have an opportunity to use Baltimore City and the state of Maryland as the backdrop to show now these fans the greatness of one of the greatest American cities and a great state in this union. It's our time. And that's the way we approached it. And I think that's the really outcome that we're looking for. Basketball is going to be great for that week, but it's way bigger than basketball. Thanks, Alan, Commissioner. Um, before we get to the, the uh, next question, we have maybe time for one or two more questions, but wanted to allow um, Lieutenant Governor um, Rutherford and Mayor Scott to say a few final words before you have to jump for, uh, to another meeting. Well, I'll just start by saying again uh, that we are extremely excited here in Baltimore about the CIAA. Uh, as Al just said and the commissioner just said, this is a perfect match. We are talking about Black excellence and Black culture, and there is no city in America that embodies that uh, better than Baltimore. And it's about us growing together. It's about showcasing that together. And that's exactly what we're going to do uh, this year and beyond. We can't wait to have everybody here. We're going to have everything in place. We're going to be ready. Our arms are going to be welcome. We're going to have the crabs and the obey on deck, and we're going to be ready to celebrate CIAA in a way that only Baltimore can do it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm looking forward to uh, the, the tournament coming to Baltimore, bringing all the folks to Maryland to see uh, our, our Queen City, but also the state of Maryland and the hospitality that can be offered. Uh, I'm gonna warm up for the tournament on Saturday by watching Howard uh, beat Morgan uh, in that basketball game, and maybe even Tuesday, watch Howard beat Coppin. Uh, so I'm gonna be, you know, well prepared by the time the uh, CIAA comes to town. 
And so we're very excited, you know, at the state level and, you know, whatever support we can provide, we'll continue to do that. So thank you. Mr. Lieutenant Governor, I just want to remind you that this is recorded. So President Jenkins and, and our good president and Morgan probably are both going to see this. So they might. They oh, might I'll, I'll be at the game probably with, uh, with both of them. <laughs> we have a nice little rivalry, so it goes well. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Rutherford and Mayor Scott. Um, like I said, we have time for maybe two or three more questions. We'll kick it over to Mark Gray. Um, please go ahead with your question. Hello, can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Hey, thanks for sticking around, Lieutenant Governor Boyd and Mr. Scott. And it's good to see you again, Al. I got a, a Baltimore specific question that's away from the floor. As one who grew up on the West Side, went to Walbrook High, was a foil of those great Dunbar teams. I recognize that Baltimore is indeed a basketball town. Heck, I even graduated from Morgan State. That being said, one of the things that made the tournament profitable for Charlotte was the in-town visitor who wasn't going to basketball games. How concerned are you about that? And can Baltimore turn a profit on its investment without that group of tourists coming into the spending uh, into the city and spending that money? Yeah, yeah, I was just starting. I think Al and the commissioner should chip in too and say that we know that we can pull that off here. Al and the commissioner and the team have worked very diligently with our business community. We have the infrastructure here as a large city to put on this event. We're excited about this. We put on these kind of events all the time, but we specifically went at the CIAA because we knew it would be so important for us to do this and to uplift a part of our community that for far too long was ignored. Our black businesses, our small businesses here in the city. And in partnership with the CIAA, with our businesses, with Visit Baltimore and everyone else, we know that we can provide that same kind of opportunity, albeit in a different way, and a new CIAA experience for the casual person that is not, that is coming for all the extracurricular and not just the basketball. And, and uh, Mayor Scott, uh, you're, you're right on the money. Um, the only thing I would add, Mark, what we did early on once we were selected, <clears throat> we didn't run away from this, but we embraced the local promoters here in Baltimore City and in Maryland. We brought them into the conversation. We knew parties are going to happen um, and people aren't going to go to the basketball game. So we had to embrace that conversation. And so we wanted to make sure we had conversations with promoters. They understood that number one is to make sure the CIAA shines and they look good and people go to the games. That's number one. However, for those who also want to have parties, we wanted to make sure that uh, they could have parties, they could make money, but do it in the right way. In the right way, meaning to make sure the CIAA's brand stays solid and to make sure Baltimore City brand stays solid. So we've had great conversations with the promoters. We know they're gonna be parties. The reality though is when you talk about return on investment, and I think we, we need to be very honest with each other. Prior to March of 2020, none of us knew a pandemic was coming. And anybody on this call in the media who thinks they could predict that, you're not being truthful. So now the number one thing we all have to be mindful of is public health. Now, public health may mean that we may have to be a little bit more conservative on revenue projections for this first year. We don't know what that looks like yet, because again, we're trying to navigate something that changes daily. But the commissioner and myself and the presidents and city and state, we're gonna work through this one. This is a long-term commitment. And so, yes, 2022 is gonna be great. Do we know what the total RI will be on this yet? We don't, but we have to be honest that our number one goal is to make sure folks come here, enjoy their time, spend money, but leave healthy. And those who live here, who go to the games and go to outside events, leave those healthy. That is number one. And that's where I'm committed. I know Commissioner and I have had these conversations, but yeah, at the end of the day, our private sector who've helped us raise money, we're gonna help them to get their return on investment as well. But 
We need to all be honest with what we're dealing with right now is a health crisis and we need to approach it the right way. Yeah, and Al, I would just say to the media, give us some grace. I mean, we all deserve a little grace. We can't control COVID. We haven't been able to control it since day one. You know, we canceled last year. This time last year was heartbreaking, um, more heartbreaking because we had already canceled a fall, then we canceled our basketball tournament and then it just kept going on. But we've been committed, our board has committed that we would all do what we had to do on our institutions and our campuses within our championships to prepare for this year. Um, the numbers, we've been talking high numbers since day one, because I did believe and do believe that once we can get on the ground, whatever normal looks like, people are coming and they're excited. This tournament means a lot to a lot of people, our community, our sponsors, our fans, our students, to me. And so we're gonna do whatever we can to support that. But we also wanna be realistic that we can't control if people decide they don't wanna come because of COVID or because of the Omicron or because of whatever circumstances, but we'll do our best to make sure that when they do come, that we're prepared to receive them and they have a good time. And like Al said, that people can leave back home safely um, as they came in. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Al. Um, final question will come from Holden Weiland. Um, I hope I said your last name right. Please go ahead with your question. Um, sorry, I don't know if you guys can hear me. Um, Commissioner, I just wanted to ask, uh, this follows up on the discussion you were just talking about with the uh, health and, and the COVID, um, you know, with the during the college football bowl season, we saw, you know, some teams during the season, uh, you know, during uh, before a bowl would get a lot of cases and then a game would have to be canceled. Some of the bowl games had to be canceled. Um, what would happen in, during the tournament if, you know, some teams have a surge of cases? Will there have to be forfeits and the tournament would still proceed or would you make a decision to cancel the tournament mid tournament? What, what would happen uh, in that situation? That's a good question. I was prepared for you to ask that question. Um, absolutely, we our plan is to have the tournament. Um, it's also the man, it will test every single day with all of our teams. Everyone who's around operations who will be on the floor will test as well. Um, and vaccinations are required for many of our operating teams. Um, if in case, if we put the bracket together, and a team has a case of COVID and they don't have enough players to play. Right now, the minimum requirement is seven and you have to have a coach. If in fact that team is not able to move on, we will continue through the bracket. The bigger question is if we get to championship, the, two, the four teams that get to championship day, then what happens then? then? We'll be able to share more of that information after we have some further discussion. We have had some internal conversations regarding that, if we would be able to have a championship, do you name that person, that team um, that stayed in and the other team out, or do you play the game the next weekend? There's a lot of logistics in that conversation that needs to be had, whether we can get through the, the bracket all the way to championship day. But if a team does not make it to the next round, we'll continue to move and advance teams that can until we get to championship day. So that's currently where we are with our protocols and managing the bracket. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, thank you for everybody for joining us today. Um, hey, Ben, can I just uh, say one last thing, if you don't mind? Oh, yeah, by, by all means, Al, please go to. Yeah, I just wanted to, again, to thank Lieutenant Governor Rutherford and Mayor, Mayor Scott for their support here. And I also really want to give a, a public uh, thanks to Commissioner McWilliams, Dr. Bro, Dr. Allen, the other 10 presidents in the conference for the confidence in Baltimore City. We do not take that for granted. You could have gone to any other city that was on the, your short list. We're forever, forever grateful to be selected. We're going to make you look fantastic and make you proud of what we do. And at the end of the day, we want all the fans to enjoy their time spent here in Baltimore City. And our goal is to be a long-term partner with CIAA for years to come. So again, we just want to say thank you for your confidence and we're looking forward to it. Thank you, Al. 
and thank you all for joining for joining us today. Ben, I know you'll close out. Um, we just ask that you all follow us on our social media platform. Uh, we have an app where you can find all the information, tournament, uh, the CIAA tournament.org. All the information is available to you. Um, as we make changes, uh, Ben and our team, let me just thank the team and Martine and, um, and the LOC PR team for making sure that we got this event done today. Trish, um, thank you so much for the communications plan that we have. We don't operate in silos, so one says it, hopefully all the rest of us are on the same page, that, that's the deal. Um, but at the end of the day, we have 33 days or 31 for the first event, 33 days until we get to crown or at least start the crowning of a CIAA championship. This tournament means everything to our student athletes, absolutely being safe and absolutely giving them the opportunity to do what they love to do in their craft. And so we appreciate all your support today and the stories that you will help us tell, tell as we uh, crown a champion. So thank you, Al and Lieutenant Governor, Dr. Allen, Dr. Bro, Daryl Brooks, Sade. Um, just thank you. I'm humble to be on this call with you today. Thank you all. See you in Charm City. Oh yeah, it's coming Thank up. you. Thanks, Ben. You guys take care. Yeah. Be well. Be safe. Thank you.